Hey everyone, I'm just showing up here at Kevin Prowl's house in New Kensington. He has about a gazillion uh, really nice plants that I'm going to ask him all about. So stay tuned and we're going to get some really good gardening tips. Thanks, Kevin, for letting no, me uh, it's my hang pleasure. out with you here this it's morning. It's my pleasure, as usual. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I was kind of curious about was a couple things in my mind, but one was, is there, just in general, do you, is there anything that you dif do differently? Because um, some people might be watching this getting ready for their 4th of July party, or you know maybe a Labor Day, or whatever. Is there anything that you do differently in your garden, or do special in your garden as you're preparing for because you're off today. Yeah, I took yeah. off because I need that extra day to prepare. Um, I don't know, you know, I've always been pretty meticulous about my maintenance in the garden, so it, there really isn't that big of a difference for me. Um, certainly, you want to make sure whenever you have a big garden party or something like that, you want to make sure that the lawn is trimmed nice and short, you know, because uh, a longer lawn could be actually become a trip hazard if it's too long. Um, it's just easier to walk on for people. It's also probably healthier for the grass if it's kept a little shorter while you have that traffic on it. Um, so that's one of the big things I would do. Uh, I certainly want to make sure all the weeds are pulled because I want to have a nice presentation. I make sure everything's really well watered because all are going to look their best when they're fully, you know, flush with water. All right, well, let's, uh, let's take a stroll. Okay, be the way. <laughs> Yep, sago palms. This is a really neat plant called a cross vine. This happens to be a fruit that's forming this year. Fully evergreen flowering vine. It's a great plant. Uh, that little red flower there, this is actually a dwarf pomegranate. Um, it's about to go in full bloom. You see there's a lot of buds kind of forming in the plant. Uh, it'll bloom all summer long and by fall I get a bunch of half dollar sized pomegranates hanging off of it. Uh, come October the whole thing turns bright yellow and defoliates and at that time before it gets really cold I just store it in the garage and it, I bring it back out. I keep it lightly watered in the winter since it's dormant that it doesn't need a lot in the winter. Uh, it's just a fun little novelty plant that everybody comments on. You know, everybody gets these little spike plants every year for the annual plantings. You, you know, they're like a buck and a half or a couple bucks, whatever, in the store, little quartz uh, spikes for your flower pots. Well, spikes are actually really big growing plants. They're actually, a certain variety of that is the National Tree of New Zealand, believe it or not. And this is one called a Red Star. And it used to be in a little quartz-sized pot about seven years ago. And I've kept it every year, and I keep it in the garage in the winter. No heat, just keep the frost off of it. And I put a couple lights on just to give it something. And it has turned into a really cool specimen. And this is back in the service area of my, my upper patio. Fills a nice little niche here. And it looks tropical. I love it. Uh, these are my knockout roses. They uh, were in bloom, full bloom last week. They're really starting to fade now. So I want to show everybody how you'd want to deadhead this. Uh, you can take this plant right here and you can cut this back. And what I'd like to do is I don't like to go down to the first bud. I'd like to take it down to that second bud below where all the groupings of the flowers are. Uh, you're going to get a stronger regrowth and a, a probably just as equally a nice set of blooms happening once this breaks bud again. So a couple buds down from the flower cluster, snip, and you're good to go. This is a really neat thing I did a couple years ago. I took an old pallet and I cleaned it up, painted it, filled it with fabric to hold soil, filled it with potting soil, and I plant it with color every year. And this year I've got a bunch of, uh, you know, really hot, kind of a hot pink petunia. I think it looks great against the green. Uh, another thing I do before the party is to make the annuals look really nice. I'll just go ahead and I'll deadhead some of the faded flowers. You know, you can actually pinch some of those off. It actually helps. You know, you see that you can pinch that right off. It actually helps the plant bloom a lot longer and a lot stronger if you do that. Plus, it just gives an overall really good look to the plant. So before that party, I'll do a little bit of pinching and deadheading in some of these uh, faded blooms uh, just to get the, the best overall look uh, so it shows really well. There's another really cool plant. People always comment to me when they come to my garden party. 
this is called distillium. It's in a really large pot. It's really not quite hardy for our climate, so in the wintertime I just put it in the garage, keep it watered by the window, no heat, nothing, pull it back out. It really fills a nice niche in my garden. It's actually kind of getting big, but it's got such great sculptural lines. I love it. Distillium. This is black diamond crepe myrtle. Um, it does really well against the south side of my garage wall. It's a fairly young plant. Come August, all the tips of these flowers will have deep red blossoms on. Absolutely stunning. The only thing I do in the wintertime is I just kind of wrap it up and keep the wind off of it in the wintertime and kind of bind it up. Does really, really well, obviously. And look at that foliage color. Astounding. One of the biggest features about my own private garden here uh, are my windmill palms. I've got a few of these growing in the yard. I, yeah, I do protect them in the wintertime, but the bang I get for them, uh, you know, is just so much, it's so worth the effort of protecting them. They're really absolutely wonderful plants. This one's been here for probably about seven years now. Uh, it happens to be a female on the backside. You can hardly see them, but there's a lot of seeds forming on it. So I have all kinds of babies. If anybody wants some seeds of my palms, just ask. I'll be glad to give you some. Uh, it's a little lopsided right now. It's got a few fronds that are a little bit big. And you know, for the party, I want things to look really just right. So I'm going to take these off. Uh, just as a note for palms, it's a good idea to leave the palm fronds on until they start turning brown because the potassium that is actually in the leaf, when the frond starts to dry, gets pulled back into the plant and it makes it a lot more healthier for the plant. But this has got a pretty good head of foliage, so I'm just going to take off, you know, a couple of these here that maybe this one, this one, and this back one tends to give it a little bit of a lopsided look, so I'm just going to take those off real quick. Uh, not going to hurt the plants, it's going to make me feel better about how the plant looks. And they're pretty hefty branches, so it takes a pretty good cut. And you can see the size of that. You know, Cleopatra was here, right? <laughs> anyway, there's one. And I'll take uh, this one off. Okay. Because it's, it's just sticking out a little far for me. Whoop, I can see that. So uh, for one leaf, that's pretty amazing. And uh, actually, I think I'll leave that back when I think that's fine for now. So again, just cleaning up the windmill palm for my garden party. The hydrangeas are amazing. So yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And just look at that. Look at that. Astounding. And look at that two-tone. Check that one out. Pink and blue and white on the Look at that. How can you get that anywhere else? Without a it has to be a hydrangea to do that. Uh, that is uh, one of my window box planters on my garage window, and every year I try something new. This year I've got uh, the primary plant in there. You can see it's the purple Skeviola. Uh, excellent plant. By the end of the summer, that big purple flower, they'll be, it'll just be cascading over the sides of that planter. Bulletproof, drought tolerant, easy to grow. You know, take a look at Skeviola for an annual. It's terrific. Azaleas, Hicks U. Uh, a few things in pots here. I've got a yucca here. I've got some what we call Lantana montvidensis. That's this has been in the same pot for probably 10 years. Does very well. This is an agave. This happens to be a lamium called orchid frost. Does great in a pot. This is actually stays in here all winter. I put the agave in the garage in the winter. Different types of geraniums, money warts, lantanas. Uh, there's bacopa in here. Um, just, you know, whatever your heart desires, a golden dragon wing begonia, uh, a silver, I believe they call that an angel wing plant with a silver foliage up there. Just, whatever you want to do, just make it colorful. This is something all my guests for the garden party are going to have to deal with, this monster summon substance hosta. I actually have to pull it back off the walk a bit, and I eventually might have to move it here in the next couple of years. It is literally attacking the corner of my front porch walk area, but the leaf... I mean, look at that astoundingly huge chartreuse leaf and that big flower bud coming out, that's going to host a bunch of beautiful purple flowers. This is Summon Substance Hosta. It's an amazing plant. This is me being really obsessive compulsive about my front lawn, my front garden. I'm really into the detail, so I actually edge my zoysia grass lawn with a shear, a scissors, instead of what people would normally use. It just gives me that really amazing tight crisp edge that I really, really want to see. So, yep, I am using a scissors to edge my lawn.
Yep, I am using a scissors to edge my lawn. <laughs> 